Where I live in Massachusetts and New England in general, there is plenty of areas with open lands to build new homes. However, when you get closer to Boston and any of the other major cities, the availability of empty lots decreases. So when people wanna live in a single family home and they wanna also live relatively close to the city, they often end up purchasing a home and then completely remodeling it and changing not only the interior, but even changing the exterior appearance. And in some cases, they might even look to knock it down and build a new home. Hi, I'm Chris Novelli with M3 Architecture, and today we're gonna look at a quick example of taking a boring colonial home, a cookie cutter home, and transforming it into a home with modern styling. So when it comes to style, I personally prefer modern design homes, but I equally love historic homes and structures. But what I can't stand are the McMansions or the builder grade homes with cookie cutter details and cookie cutter style. And many of my clients feel the same way and they want to live in something unique or something meaningful. And that sort of boring cookie cutter design does not. And so oftentimes when looking to transform one of these boring homes, my clients are looking to turn it into something that looks a little more modern. I would never suggest taking a historic home and stripping it of its character and its detailing. I love historic homes. But on most of these suburban homes that I'm talking about here, we are dealing with fake character and no detailing. So I have absolutely no problem with changing the appearance. Some people might look at these homes and think that they're pretty nice. And that's great if you feel that way, you don't have to change anything. But what if you did wanna change something? So let's just run through a quick example of how you can change the exterior appearance of one of these boring cookie cutter homes. What I did here is I just found a random house for sale on Zillow, a house that one of my clients might consider purchasing and renovating. I have absolutely no connections to this house, no connections to the real estate agent, to the seller, or any of the potential buyers. It is just a fun exercise to see what is possible. Okay, now we're gonna do some quick sketching over some photos that I printed out. Again, what we're looking at is taking this boring colonial home and turning it into something that's more modern that would work with what my clients typically wanna see in, in a house that gets fully renovated. Currently, we have four bedrooms on the second floor level with one bathroom on the second floor level. And then the first floor has sort of two living room areas, a small kitchen, a small dining room, and a half bathroom. What we wanna do is we wanna transform the, the second floor of the home to just have three bedrooms for the kids. We're going to put a, a new primary suite addition on the left hand side of the house. We're gonna try to expand the living area a little bit. We're gonna try to enlarge the kitchen a little bit. And we're gonna try to make the entry a little bit nicer. And again, all while sort of transforming the appearance to be more of a modern style. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use some trace paper. And I'm just gonna do some quick really rough sketches of, of what I'm thinking of. And this not this doesn't get into materiality and the finishes. This is just a, a quick sort of overview. So one of the things that you typically see in these suburban colonial homes is the second floor is cantilevered out a, a foot or two um, from the first floor level. That gives a little bit more room in the bedrooms upstairs and provides a little bit of cover at the front door, but not a whole lot of cover. What we want, what we want to do is we want to make sure that, that the, the people arriving in the front door have protection and also sort of make it a little bit more interesting. So one thing that I like to do, whenever I see that, that overhang, I see that as a potential to sort of build out a roof extension, right? And we're look again, we're looking at, at, at a modern style. So this would be a sort of a flat roof that projects out uh, three or four feet. 
We talked about not having any protection on the garage for the garage door. So maybe this roof can sort of over can extend and wrap around the side. Um, one thing that we're doing is when, when you, when you have that sort of wrap around and you have that roof element, it's creating a, a, a sort of a motion that, that draws you in, that draws you from that driveway to here. But we want that sort of directionality to, to have something to terminate into. So if this roof overhang kind of came out and then turned down, or if there was something that came out of the of the house that projected out that it that this roof could die into right and now you're extending the the living area on the first floor and then you're sort of having that as a spot to return into and maybe since we know that entry is tight maybe we take that that sort of front addition and bring it all the way across like that and then you're you sort of enter you you would enter off, you know, maybe it has some stairs going down like this. And maybe you would enter into the side of that addition. And this roof overhang, that covering that gives you the protection as you walk in, dies into the end of this, of this sort of addition. From there, you know, that has the opportunity now to, to get some large windows, some large window opening into that expanded living room. And then maybe you do something unique uh, with the entry and maybe the entry is on the side or maybe the entry is on the front and, and there's a little recess. But I think building out from the entry and, and using that roof overhang is a good way to, to start. The next thing that we do when we look at re reconfiguring this the, the front of this house is we're definitely going to get rid of these fake shutters. Uh, that just doesn't fit with the styling. We might also want to think about enlarging the window openings. We can you know, we probably don't want to mess with the header or, or the, the jack studs on either side, but we can certainly lower that sill and maybe get some large openings rather than, than these small, tiny ones. And so maybe it goes something like that. And we could also look at using casement windows rather than double hung windows. And that way you have this, this full sort of expanse of glass. Then you have the roof. Uh, there's several things that you can do with the roof. Um, you know, you could leave the roof framing as it is, or if you really wanted to get adventurous, you could remove the roof framing and have a, uh, uh, since it's not very deep, you could you could have a shed roof that goes down to the back. And now what you're talking about is maybe this gets extended up a little bit because it's sloping down to the back. And then maybe you have this sort of, you know, big shed roof that slopes down. And you have this area up here, this sort of where we can do something different with the, with the trim. Again, we can enlarge the enlarge in these uh, windows down here in that family room. And then the addition off to the side, I think we have the opportunity to sort of come off, come off with a flat roof or maybe a roof that pitches down to the back. And then, you know, maybe we, we do a shed roof sort of facing the opposite way. And I'm running out of space here on my, on my trace paper, but, you know, maybe... You know, maybe if that comes across and you have the, the primary suite is something in here, you know, with a shed roof that looks like that. And then you have this connector piece that comes across. So that could be a, that could be a potential. Okay. So now let's take a look at the first floor level. I talked about, enlarging that family room, extending it out, and even extending the, the entry hall. So if that sort of looks like that, where it comes out, now that room gets a lot, now that family room gets a lot larger. You can have, you can still keep that fireplace, um, and then maybe you have, maybe you have sort of a seating area over here, and then, you know, maybe 
a TV viewing area down over here with a couple of couches. And then here you can have that big large window in the front. Um, and that way you can maybe have, you can, you know, maybe you can sort of create the, a conversational area there and a seating area there. This entry, um, looking at it here in plan, I don't necessarily think that that the sketch of entering from the side will work. Uh, just because of the slope of the ground, I still think that we need to come in from the front. But, you know, maybe that the living room entry kind of goes out further and the and the uh, the vestibule entry or the or the foyer it steps back a little bit, so that way you still have where you have this roof overhang, and this roof overhang, overhang wraps around to get protection for the garage. You have that roof overhang either dying into that, or maybe or maybe this roof overhang is extends out further, and it sort of cr wraps around there as well. Um, and maybe it, maybe it can come back and return into something over here. Maybe we have part of the uh, connector, right? Because we're going to have this connector piece. We have this door here. Maybe this connector piece to the to the primary bedroom becomes a closet. This is a walk-in closet. Um, and this roof, this roof overhang, can sort of turn the corner and die into that walk-in closet. Um, so that's that's that. That gives. You know, that gives a little bit more room to the to that front entry. Maybe we can tuck a closet in here um, because we're going to be losing that closet. You still have the stair here. I would keep this bathroom, right? And I would just, it's a, you know, it's a decent sized bathroom. You have a little, a little linen closet and you have a vanity and a nice window. I would keep that bathroom there just because there's not a, not a whole lot that you can do with it. The other thing that we might want to think of is, is you know, typically you have access to, you know, to that family room. So maybe we don't want to completely close that off with with furniture. Maybe, but we still could create sort of two zones, um, or maybe, or maybe, you know, maybe you have this stair coming down. Right there's your there's your stair and there's the opening to that room. If this gets extended out and maybe it can extend out wider as well, right? Because you you we you know we don't have a lot of width there. You know maybe this becomes the living room, and you still have this fireplace here that maybe you can create a little sitting area in front of the fireplace, but maybe you we can frame out a pantry. Because this kitchen doesn't have a pantry, so maybe we have a maybe we have a pantry here, and the bathroom here, and the and the access to to the primary suite off of that side. So I I, I think I like that better. I like I like ex expanding that living room area because, you know, sticking to the confines of the of the footprint, uh, and and just sort of bumping it out a little bit doesn't really get you a a, a nice usable room. Um, if this is going to be the main sort of living space, we we're going to want that to be sort of called out, and we're going to want that to to be nice and large. On the back of the house, so we have this slider here, and I almost think that the slider is a little bit too large. Maybe maybe it it's it we go with a smaller slider, or maybe we just sort of go with a, with a single door opening, and maybe a single door opening with with a window or a side light. What that does is, is it allows us to put a row of a bank of cabinets there in the kitchen. Um, I would completely remove this bearing wall and open up this this area. And I know that's a de that's a debate right now whether if the open plan concept is still in style or not. Um, I think that we have enough separation from the living room area that I think the the kitchen and an, an expanded kitchen and a dining room opening to each other is pretty nice. Um, you know, when, when you come in off, uh, when you come in off this new entry, right, you'll have this closet, um, that we've created and maybe it's, maybe it's even a double-sided, uh, sort of mudroom area. Um, but you, you have this much larger space to walk in, um, for an entry. And then what we would do is we put a new post here and a new post here, and we will put a beam across there in the ceiling allowing us to open that up. 
by opening that up, it allows us to take this kitchen all the way across, right? So if this kitchen sort of looked like that, maybe it comes all the way to here. Maybe this, this is sort of like a little wing wall uh, to make that, that beam a little, a little shorter. Now you're looking at, at a massive kitchen. You know, you have that, maybe you can still even keep the slider there. You can put in a gigantic island. And, you know, maybe you have your fridge over here. Uh, your sink can still sort of stay back in this area um, and, and use that window or relocate that window. And then you have the dishwasher and then you can have your stove sort of over here. Um, you might even have the possibility, since, since we, we are expanding this kitchen to be a, a really large kitchen now, um, I would even consider putting in a row of three or four windows and bringing the glass almost down to the countertop level. I mean, you want it up a little bit further from the countertop so you can you know, have a space for, for outlets and to run a, a little piece of tile there. But to really let some light into that kitchen, you know, I would put a whole bank of windows. And you know, from, if you do that, maybe the sink wants to be centered you know, and the dishwasher's on one side. I don't like appliances in the in the island or sinks or cooktops in the island. So I would I would keep the cooktop over here, the, the the range over here, and you can do fridge or or a combo fridge freezer, um, and you know you have you'll have this pantry space that's off to the side. Um, it the the pantry is nice too because when you come out come up if you park in the garage and you come up these stairs from the basement, the pantry's right there to unload your food. This sort of countertop area over here could become sort of like a coffee bar. And then where you have this, this old living room, that becomes sort of your dining room area. So, you know, you can have a large, large table fit lots of people. So, you know, you walk in, you're going to walk into this entry, you know, where you have closets or storage on either side. And then you come to this and you have this gigantic open living room dining area or you go left to this to this new expanded uh, living room and this living room is still connected to the kitchen but but it's still you know it's far enough where it's quiet and then back here is is sort of where we add you know sort of the master the new primary suite that bathroom stays where it is which is you know the bathroom is nice because it's located now further away from the kitchen um, and further away from the dining room area. That's a great layout for the first floor. And then, you know, again, the deck, maybe we, right now the deck doesn't go all the way across. Maybe we extend the deck all the way uh, across to the, um, to the full length of the house. And maybe we even somehow tie in the deck with this roof overhang, right? We have this, we have this roof overhang that's coming around, providing protection at the door, providing protection for the garage entry be below. I mean, maybe this roof overhang comes over and, and completely wraps the, wraps the deck. So now you have a covered deck and you, know, you bring these posts up uh, and that could be enclosed as a screen, screened in deck area, or it could be left open. Um, and you, know, you can bring the deck off to the side or, or sort of keep it in line with the house. The deck can also come uh, all the way across and, and wherever the new primary suite sort of hooks up, um, you can have access from that primary suite again out onto the new deck. So I think that's a, that's a pretty decent looking first floor level. Now I want to take a look at the second floor. So here's the second floor with that stair coming up with that awkward hallway. You have the existing primary bedroom and you have one, two, three additional be bedrooms. This one in the middle being really tiny, one bathroom. So what I was saying before is let's eliminate this bedroom right here. And let's bring this, this wall all the way down. Then that allows this window to flood the, the uh, hallway with natural light. You know, there's your, there's your stair going down. And now you have this, this window that, that's open with light. Now what you can do here, there's a couple different things we can do. This closet, we can switch the door to, the, to here and have that be the closet for, for this bedroom. 
which might which might be a, a nice option or we could completely just eliminate it and maybe even frame a stair up to the attic level uh, because right now we just have sort of this pull down stair um, so that that's something to think about but i would at least open that up and let's say for now we're going to we're going to include that uh, we're going to flip that door so that closet is into this room over here we can bring a wall all the way across extending the hallway and now you have this this window providing a little bit of light to the hallway as well um, this bedroom now is pretty large right and you still have two windows you know you have the opportunity i would even consider adding windows to the side you have this existing bathroom right that has a small linen closet and it has a tub and it has the toilet and then it has the vanity what i i would keep that bathroom exactly how it how it is and just put in new fixtures and finishes but what i would do with this existing walk-in closet right here i would make that a second bathroom and i would just flip this existing bathroom the, the same layout so you have you would have toilet, you have the vanity, you would have a shower on this end, you know, with a little linen closet. Um, you would have a, we'd add a win probably, uh, we could keep the window there because it's, it sort of matches what's, what's in the existing bathroom where the window is sort of near that toilet. Um, and then you, and then you have, you have the entry to here. Um, and what that, that, what that does for the rest of the space is we would keep this wall because we know that this wall is bearing a bearing wall for the ceiling framing. Uh, we would keep this bedroom exactly how it is, has a closet. We would keep this door here, um, and then we would add a closet. I, I would take out that closet there because that's you know kind of an awkward space, and maybe you put a new closet uh, in here, and then you you would have. You know, two windows on the front, two windows on the on this back bedroom. And again, you have a window here already. I would match that with a window over here. And so now, now each of these three bedrooms are huge. Look at three huge bedrooms for the kids. Each bedroom has two windows either facing the front or the back, and then another window on the side. These bedrooms are going to be light filled whenever you can have windows on two sides of, of, of the room. It just, it just is such a better situation. You have, you now have two bathrooms where people aren't going to be fighting for the bathroom. So you have, you know, one bathroom, two bathroom for three, for the three kids to share. Um, you have the stair going down. We have that weird column that's on that stair. So again, I would look at what's going on. Um, I would look at what's going on in the attic and probably what we would have to do is add add a little uh, column there and up in the ceiling have a beam here and then there's probably already a beam here on that side um, but that allows that allows that sort of to remove that that weird column okay so now what i'm going to do is i am going to take these sketches and i'm going to refine them a little further and so i'll show you what that looks like as as i work on it and as as the sketches get get completed
I hope you enjoyed this quick little design exercise. And if you want to see more, uh, check out some of the other videos or go to my website, n3architecture.com to see more about my work. Thanks. Bye.